Hello friends, welcome to another video. This is my second tutorial. In last tutorials, I have shown you the design of linear power supply. If you haven't seen it, you may check it in description. Today, we will talk about the switch mode power supplies. The name suggests the output voltage which provided to the load is controlled by a switching limit. You must be thinking, we already have linear power supply. Then why to go for SMPS or when to go for SMPS? Well, you might get those answers in this video. So, let's start. First of all, what is SMPS? It can be defined as an electronic circuit that converts power using switching devices that are turned on and off at higher frequencies and storage components like capacitors or inductors to supply the power. SMPS is also an AC to DC converter. Let's see the difference between linear power supply and switch mode power supply. Linear power supply consists of linear regulators like regulator ICs and SMPS consists of switching regulators or we can say switching components like MOSFETs or transistors. LPS can only step down the voltage to produce a lower output voltage by operating transistor in linear mode. SMPS supplies the power by switching the series pass transistor by cutoff and saturation mode. LPS has low efficiency but SMPS has higher efficiency. LPS has simpler design but SMPS contains kind of complex design as you can see. In LPS, the ripple content is very less and in SMPS, ripple content is pretty much. LPS is very heavy due to high size of transformer and heat sinks hence we can't use it in very high wattage applications. The size of transformer and heat sinks are very less so it is compact in size and lighter. Hence we can use it in higher wattage applications. Let's see the block diagram of SMPS. First, input rectification and filtering stage. At input stage, we get main supply voltage that is 230V 50Hz this AC voltage we give to the rectifier which gives pulsating DC and further it is sent to the larger filter capacitor. In that case, we get 325V DC that is 230V into root 2 volts at the output of filter. Second stage is chopper stage. It is a stage which contains the switching element. This stage converts DC wave into pulsated DC. So that is squared voltage containing frequency of very high 10 kHz. Even if the output is pulsating DC, the output voltage does not go below 0 volt. Third block is output transform. The output is required to be isolated from the input. The pulsating DC is applied to the primary winding of a high frequency transformer. This converts the voltage up or down to the required value on its secondary winding. Fourth block is output rectifier and filter. This pulsating output of the transformer is then rectified by using short key dars. Then output of the rectifier is smoothed by filter containing inductors and capacitors. In order to regulate the output power, feedback circuit is used, which monitors the output voltage and compared with a reference voltage depending upon the design and safety requirements. The controller may contain an isolation mechanism such as octocouplers. Now let's see the classification of SMPS. It is classified according to two different topologies. So these topologies are basically DC to DC converters. First is isolated type and second is non-isolated type. In isolated type topology, there are flyback converters, push-pull converters, half-bridge converters, full-bridge converters, etc. These topologies include transformer. Thus output can be produced higher or lower than input by adjusting turns ratio. As per the transformer design is concerned, SMPS runs at very high frequency, so the transformer size is very small and cost effective with respect to transformer which are used at 50 Hz or 60 Hz. The relation is given as induced EMF is equal to 4.44 into frequency into flux induced in core into primary turns. So keeping flux and primary turns constant the induced EMF is directly proportional to frequency as the overall KVA capacity will increase with increasing frequency. 
and also from this formula uh, we can find out flux induced is equal to induced emf upon 4.44 into switching frequency into turns ratio well as we know the flux induced is equal to flux density into cross sectional area of flux path hence as frequency increases the area decreases which decreases the size of transformer in non isolation type of topologies there are buck converters boost converters buck boost converters and cup converters these topologies include inductor as a energy storage device and output voltage is controlled by changing the duty cycle from 0 to 1 we will see these topologies in detail well we have to use the switch to change the value of output voltage in that case we need to close and open the switch periodically in this way we can control the mean output voltage which is nothing but average value with respect to time the relation between this input voltage and output voltage is given by duty cycle which is defined by on time over total switching time period using pulse width modulation we can control output voltage across load by controlling the duty cycle first buck converters here the output voltage is always less than input voltage so the output voltage is equal to duty cycle into input voltage typically the power in which we can use is 0 to 1000 watts second is boost converters output voltage is always greater than the input voltage hence output voltage is equal to input voltage upon 1 minus duty cycle buck boost converters output voltage can be greater or less than input voltage according to our use hence output voltage is given as product of input voltage into duty cycle over 1 minus duty cycle let's see the advantages of smps first it is lighter in weight and reduce size which reduces the shipping cost second increases the efficiency smps waste very little power in the form of heat because of the ohms law where power is current times voltage when voltage and current in a device is negligible so the power disadvantages of smps first switching losses increases in series pass transistor due to high frequency switching second due to high frequency switching radio frequency interference occur in neighboring electronic circuit third the ripple content in smps is very high around 100 millivolts well that is all about the basic information of switchboard power supply if you find this stuff useful please hit the like button subscribe to my channel next time i'll post the design steps regarding non isolated topologies and press the bell icon below so you'll get the notification whenever i'll post any new video and for last thanks for watching